Well, we begin with the latest on the midterm elections. Republicans are closing in on control of the House after winning more key seats overnight. Meanwhile, ABC News can project Democrat Katie Hobbs is the winner of the Arizona governor's race, beating Republican Carrie Lake, who had Trump's endorsement. ABC News political director Rick Klein joins me live now, along with ABC's Jay O'Brien on Capitol Hill for more. Rick, Carrie Lake is already signaling she's not going to concede. What happens if she doesn't, and how significant is this win for Democrats? Well, she has so far said that Arizonans know BS when they see it. Uh, strong suggestion that she's not giving in. Although uh, we haven't quite seen some of the inflammatory language out of her or many of the other MAGA supporting election deniers who have lost their races. They seem more fired up about Trump's loss than about their own losses. Uh, she's entitled to any legal remedies. Uh, our projection doesn't have the force of law, quite obviously, and all the votes will be counted. Uh, but once those are exhausted, um, it's hard to imagine there being a, a future path. And I'll tell you, this is as big a win as Democrats feel like they got any anywhere on the map, as big as flipping the Senate was, the idea that they held uh, the governorship in a range of battleground states in the upper Midwest, uh, and now winning in Arizona against one of the real rising stars of the Trump-aligned MAGA movement, someone that had been talked about a potential candidate for national office in Cary Lake, that is a big win, both in the substance as well as the symbolism for Democrats. Now, Jay, Republicans are close to that number of 218 seats they need to win a majority. So what key races are you still keeping your eye on? Yeah, they're within striking distance of that majority, right? They're just a few seats away. Uh, there are still some very close races in uh, California and Colorado. Some of them are just a, a few hundred to a few thousand votes away. However, it, it, the sense you get from Republicans here on Capitol Hill is that they are very much preparing to be in the majority they held uh, their first day of leadership meetings yesterday. They'll hold leadership elections later today. Republican members very much expect to be in the majority. But when they get that majority, if they get that majority, it is not going to be the numbers that Republicans wanted. They'll only have it by a few seats, and it's certainly, as you've been hearing, for days and, and almost a week now, it is not the majority that Republicans expected to have, you know, 20-plus seats, 30-plus seats. Now, Rick, Democrats suffered some big and surprising losses here in New York State. Congresswoman Alex Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is blaming that on moderate Democrats leaning into Republican narratives on crime, she says. So... How do you see this battle between moderates and progressives playing out in the Democratic Party over the next two years? Yeah, there's lots of blame to go around about what happened in New York. Uh, the fact that state lawmakers there tried to pass a redistricting plan that the uh, state Supreme Court there found to be unconstitutional, that probably cost a couple of seats as well. And I think what AOC is referring to is some of the decisions around where to run candidates as well as what, what kind of messaging to use. They feel like they were caught, caught flat-footed by the crime narrative that Republicans hit. But that happened everywhere. New York was a special case. And I do think, though, that this... They, look, the Democrats can paper over some of their divisions and some of their issues by the fact that they had a better-than-expected election night, but there's still going to be a battle in terms of where House Democratic leadership goes, questions about whether Speaker Pelosi will continue either as House Speaker or as the House Democratic leader. She ducked those questions so far. And the concerns around Joe Biden and his leadership, his readiness to, to run again, are still there. They don't go away. By the way, Joe Biden turns 80 this weekend. And Jay, speaking of leadership, House Republicans are set to hold their leadership elections today. So what are you watching for there? Yeah, and the big story there is Kevin McCarthy's bid to become Speaker of the House, right? Uh, today, he has he needs to get a simple majority of his Republican colleagues to vote for him. He is very much expected, it's very likely he will get that. That doesn't make him Speaker of the House. It only positions him to become Speaker of the House. And the big caveat is if Republicans take the majority as they are expected to do, McCarthy still has to survive a vote in January. He needs to get 218 members of his party to vote for him there. Some further right members of the party, like Matt Gates. Have said they will not vote for McCarthy. Others like Marjorie Taylor Greene have said they do support him. Uh, so, Rick, what are you watching for in these leadership elections, and what will they show about the future of the Republican Party? There are some people that will never vote for Kevin McCarthy. Where do they where do they park their votes? And I'm interested to see, Diane, are there any deals cut with even moderate Democrats that might help McCarthy secure that speakership? Jay O'Brien, Rick Klein, thank you both. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.